Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today we're doing a reaction of the Colgara boss battle theme from Tears of the Kingdom, highly requested on this channel, better late than never. We're gonna be giving it a listen here and analyzing it, and I'm gonna show you what a recreation looks like of some of the sections in Logic Pro. The MIDI is available on Patreon if you're a composer, and if you're looking to do this for a living, I recommend you check out the two free guides that I've got linked in the description. All right, so today we're listening to three sections from this piece. It's a long piece, but let's just get started on the first one. Okay, that's our first section. First of all, you'll notice that it's kind of beautiful in a way, and I think that's what draws people to the soundtrack. It has this flowing nature that feels like wind. Part of the reason is also the flute. It's not just an orchestral flute, it's actually a wooden flute. I had to dig around in my logic to try and find something that sounded similar, and the closest thing I got was this era wooden flute. Sounds like this. That use of the woodwind makes it feel soloistic, and it's part of the draw, is it feels kind of innocent in a way, kind of like the battle that's happening. And for most people, it's the first battle too, so I think that's part of it. Now, we also have some other elements that are adding that melodicism. We do have our driving bass, which is dun, 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 dun. And that's in the timpani as well as in the low strings. That sounds like this. Super driving, classic. But instead of everybody being short, we have that long melody and we have the horns that are joining at the bottom for a nice, beautiful counter melody. Check that out. That's what kind of makes it beautiful. It's not just driving. It's also a bit sad in a way. We also have this classic Zelda tambourine. For some reason, battle music in Zelda always seems to use tambourine. It sounds like this. So when you put that all together, you get this. Now, let's check out a little bit later in the piece, because there's more that makes it sound like wind than just the flowing nature. Right back to the beginning, right? So could you hear what made it sound like wind? It wasn't just that flowing melody, right? Do you hear the chromatic strings? We always tend to associate those chromatic lines with wind, almost like a tornado. And if you check that out in the strings, it's really simple, but it's really, really effective. It looks like this. So see the second time it actually gets a little higher? It kind of makes it feel like we're rising and falling and rising higher and falling. And that's really in support of the boss battle where you're completely in the air the whole time you're doing it. Now on top of that, we have other rising motion that's happening in the brass. We have this brass trumpet line. Ba -ba -bum, bum -bum. And then we have the trombone line that kind of rises up as well. So everything is focused on upward movement. So when you put those two things together, you really get a sense of rising, especially when you pair it with the other rhythm. Now pair that with the rest of our percussion and along with the flute and you get a really full sound.
Now, just to add a little glue in there, there's one thing that you might not be hearing, and that is a gong roll. Now, this is a really nice texture for just adding a little bit of glue underneath. It's the difference between things sounding empty and full. If you check this out, it sounds like this. Very subtle, but here's the difference. Here's with it. And then here's without it. If you can't hear that, I'm gonna bump it up even more so you can hear it. With it, without it. With it, without. So you see it just adds that glue. Oftentimes as composers, we're trying to just connect lines and ideas together, and it's that secret stuff that really, really adds the interest and coolness to the piece. Now we're gonna focus our attention on one more spot in this piece, even though there's a lot to cover, it would take me a long time to orchestrate the whole thing. So you guessed it, I'm going to the most replayed spot of the piece. So, so cool. If you don't know, that's a callback to Rito Village, I believe from Wind Waker, the original one, but it is so cool. And even though it sounds really full, oftentimes those orchestrations can be the most simple. It's just about how you distribute it. When you have that much orchestration, it sounds that epic and big. Oftentimes you have a lot of people on the melody. And in this case, you have both trumpets, you have the violins, you have choir, and you have that flute on the melody. So all together as a unit, they sound like this. Now with that much support, you're gonna need an equal amount of support with your bass and harmony. So for the bass, we've covered tuba, which we've now added in, as well as the original basses in the strings. And for the harmony, we're mostly focusing on the brass, the trombones and the horns. Brass can carry a, a lot of the harmony on its own, so it doesn't need a lot of support. So altogether, that sounds like this. Right Now, we still need movement because without any rhythm, it would just kind of fall flat and be a little too open sounding. So we keep the percussion that we had. If you remember that tambourine, he's still going along, but we also have added in a snare. We've added in some taiko drums, which are some ethnic drums. Together, that sounds like this. Subdividing as we go. And we've added one final idea, very, very simple, but in the strings we have this rising dun 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 Altogether that sounds like this. So in reality, we just have three different ideas. We have the melody, we have the supportive harmony, and we have this rhythm. But when you put them all together, that's when you get that really full sound. And there you have it. That's the Colgara theme. There's so much more we could talk about, of course, but I wanted to keep this short so you can really get some condensed information. Again, if you're a composer, do check the link in the description. I've got two free things for you to check out that I think you'll like. And if you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.